uh, Suraji, maybe you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the question directly to the panelists. Suraji? Hello. Yeah. I think uh, Octaviano has uh, answered my question. So uh, go on with Mbak Cut Nurul Aida. Maybe that uh, can explain us. Thank you, Octaviano. Um, all right. Uh, when it comes to income generating program, I think, um, well, uh, looking at our, our regulation now, especially we have this um, employment card. So one of the idea is to train uh, the workers who are currently out of work or being uh, fired or being laid off by their um, uh, organization uh, in order to get new skill or reskilling or up, up skilling. And um, so it's actually work, but then it will take a long time. So from my own perspective, it's actually um, the most effective and fastest way um, in the era of COVID is through the demand side of policy, through maybe like through fiscal, and so it, it, it's faster. Um, well, from super supply policies, such as like we're waiting for to give trainings, so waiting for them to, to be ready, but then it will work once, it, uh, once the COVID is clear out, in two or three months, they'll be ready to get back to work and they'll be, um, they will have uh, enough skills to go back to work. So, I think um, income generating program is important, but then um, other programs such as like this program, the, the, the employment card program, such as in Indonesia, is also will work. That's my additional comment on this. Thank you. I would like to add to Suraj's question. I completely agree with what Otaviano and Ru have said, so I will not repeat them, but, uh, I would like to make a point about the restructuring the debt because uh, the income generating problems are important, but this restructuration of debts is not being uh, as good as it could here in Brazil. Right now, uh, restructured debts are the second source of indebtedness in Brazil. So it's just behind credit cards. Uh, we have uh, around 30% of the full rates on credit cards and in restructured debts or renegotiated debts, it's 14% of the full. So the uh, renegotiating that banks do for the debt of people is not good enough because people are not paying off these debts even though they renegotiate this. So uh, there must be an improvement by, from the side of banks on this process, but mainly on the side of regulators and policymakers in order to set clear rules for renegotiating these debts so that people are not defaulting again and people are not falling again into over indebtedness. And this is not happening right now. That's why it's important to approve the law that I, I have said, 3515, um, so that people can really exit over indebtedness. Because so far in Brazil, uh, structuring the debts have, has not been effective. So uh, this comes together with income generation. Uh, now I see a hand from Dia Mamesti. You may ask your question. Okay, thank you, Fiona. Um, I uh, follow the discussion and I um, heard from uh, Nurul's presentation that most of our indebtedness households um, from uh, responsible research are coming from middle edge, uh, oh, sorry, middle class group and they are uh, mostly educated uh, people. But when there is no income, uh, this household might uh, or plan to borrow more. So what kind of uh, uh, preventive action should be taken to prevent this household to fall into poverty? I would like to hear all the speakers' thoughts about this. Thank you, back to moderator. 
Yeah, thank you. I will let uh, Nurul first to answer on this question. All right. Uh, so I think uh, the financial literacy is the key here. I think uh, when it comes to over indebtedness, it, it doesn't see whether you're coming from, um, you know, like a, a background with a high education or low education, because everybody can basically experience this over indebtedness with uh, if they don't have uh, enough uh, financial literacy. So I think the government need to tackle this uh, from the basic, which is like to um, enforce, especially the banks and also other financial institution to give um, financial literacy to or also to uh, increase the awareness of uh, financial literacy in the country. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And mm -hmm. probably some comments from Gustav. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Dia, for your question. There is also a question from Diana coming now. Uh, well, first, Dia's question, uh, in addition to what Nuru has said, uh, it's very important to uh, look at credit advertising. Uh, last year in November, in December, we have launched a case study on credit advertising in uh, Fair Finance Guide Brazil. And we have found that uh, though some banks have improved their advertising and providing people with more information about their credits, it's still very poor. The, the financial institutions, they are pressing people to contract credits that they don't, not, they don't need. So what's happening is you put it on TV or in a newspaper that, oh, you need credit right now, you can do it fast, and in one day you will have this in, in your account. So people that are desperate, they are going for this. However, they don't know the conditions. So uh making regulations approving regulations for credit advertising is essential as a prevention action not only now during coronavirus crisis but uh beyond that and th this for us is the most important thing right now because credit is really really not responsible at all uh and regarding uh, the question from Diana, I, I don't know much of what has have been uh, done uh, in, in economic terms in South America or Latin America, but I, I have seen that some countries have counteracted much more, um, much more intensively than Brazil did and much earlier than us. So for the public health, it's uh, they have some better situations right now, except for example, in Ecuador, which is the maybe the worst case here in America. Uh, and, um, but uh, regarding the economic policies, maybe Otaviano can bring more input about it. And uh, there just come a, a question from Aditya uh, regarding the strategic policies. Yeah, that's uh, more a comment. So yeah, I think I'm done if Otaviano had something to add. If, if I may add uh, two things to, to Gustavo's response. First, uh, definitely Brazil has a big problem with financial literacy of the population. This is beyond any doubt. But also there is the fact that the spreads in Brazil are uh, an, an out outliners. Uh, they are huge, which is part of the problem. And those uh, high spreads associated to credit in Brazil, they have to do partially with the feebleness of the, uh, the, the system of guarantees and so on, it's true. But it's all, it also reflects lack of competition. We don't have the, the contestability of traditional banking uh, service as it is the case in other countries where, for instance, uh, FinTech has been able to, to spread. And I'm not talking about uh, frontier FinTech. I have in mind uh, the, uh, the financial inclusion made possible in a country like Kenya uh, by simply using, by, with the simple use of, uh, of not even a smartphone, uh, simple, uh, cell phone, basic cell phone has made possible 
for uh, M-Pesa uh, in Kenya to incorporate 30 million people uh, by using uh, transfers, money transfers through cell phones. You don't have this in Brazil, see? Uh, and, and obviously, uh, with all the risks that peer-to-peer -peer lending uh, bring, and with all the needs to pay attention, as it was very well uh, uh, referred to by Nuru, and as I mentioned about China, with all the risks, it's still better to have the, uh, the diversification and the availability of, uh, uh, of uh, competitive outlets where to get money than the situation in Brazil, in which credit is still mostly dependent on banks, on a banking structure that is very much concentrated, where the guys can keep high spreads. Uh, and even when international banks tried to compete with the Brazilian banks in the retail, they failed. The only one who succeeded, Banco Santander, was the one that bought one public bank. <laughs> so the, the, the issue of uh, spreads is something that, and, and the issue of uh, opening platforms so as to make possible the entrance, the lending, the participation of, uh, of uh, other financial institutions beyond the traditional banks uh, is a priority. Fortunately, uh, in recent years, the central bank has focused on, on, on taking the initiatives to make that possible, where there's a way to go in Brazil. And with respect to, to the uh, size and speed of the policy package about the coronavirus, uh, Gustavo is, 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 is right. It took long. Uh, it took longer than necessary for the, the Brazilian federal government to respond. And this, to a large extent, reflected what I mentioned before, that is to say, having a president that was denying the problem, uh, which is terrible, uh, because while, let's say, Donald Trump and Boris Johnson, who also denied the problem in the beginning, they changed their opinion. They, they had to concede to the facts. Whereas in the Brazilian case, we have a president that is still hammering on the social distancing policies. This has not helped. So our response has taken longer than, than, than uh, what it should have taken. You know, but it's creeping. Every week it's been increasing. The size today is something, uh, the, the whole, the whole uh, amount, responding to roughly 7.5% of Brazil's GDP, which is not on the lower range in the world, but also not on the high range, not on the range of... Uh, in the US, the, uh, the, the whole package will uh, represent something close to 10% of the GDP. Uh, so 7.5% is not that much, uh, particularly because it's one shot, it's temporary, it's emergency, uh, but it, it took longer than what it should have taken. Okay, I think we almost come to the end of the discussion. Is there any last questions from the audience? Okay, so if there's no more questions, I will let each of the guest speakers to give one or two statements for closing. Uh, I will start from Nuru. All right, so I think my last uh, statement is just very quick. Uh, I remember uh, back during my college years, I always listened to this Suze Orman, probably Otaviano knows this. Um, she is a financial um, advisor in the US. Um, during my college year, I listened to her. And there are three things that are important that she highlights. First, people, and then money, and then things. So I think that, uh, in order to save the economy, I believe that we should save the people first. Very good, and from Gustavo? Yeah, 
Uh, before I say goodbye, I, I just, uh, as Otaviano said about the spread in Brazil, I, just for you to know how much is interest in Brazil, it's, for example, in credit cards, the average is 250% per year of interest. So this is much higher than anywhere. Uh, Brazil is uh, always recording on, on the highest interest rates in the world. And that, for example, for overdrafts, that, that this used to be 500% uh, per year, but then the, issue, uh, the central bank issued a regulation which has uh, dropped uh, this for 150 per year, which is a great increase, but it's still very high. Uh, and right now with the coronavirus, the Federation of Banks is saying that depending on what goes on, the spread can be even bigger than it already is. Because they, they told many big companies are also re requesting loans, not only the, SM, uh, the MSMEs, not only the small enterprises. So this uh, may uh, increase demand and uh, increase even more our spread that is already very, very big and one of the biggest in the world. And uh, he has also pointed out that contracts should be accomplished, credit contracts, even though there is the coronavirus, otherwise this would generate instability. And this is a, 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 like he was threatening that uh, people should not be full because this would increase the spits. And th this is, is very serious. Uh, if the president of the Federation of Banks say so. Um, uh, it's like uh, threatening the society from some things that is out of our own control but can be uh, controlled by authorities. So um, thank you very much Prakarsa for the invitation. I am always very happy as EDEC and as, as uh, Gustavo myself to be in events organized by the Fair Finance Guide. I think we, as our Fair Finance Guide International, are, we are doing a very good job. And thank you for everyone who is attending. And uh, if, uh, feel free to contact me or EDEC in any question you have after this. And I will also be providing my presentation for you later on. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Gustavo. Now I will let uh, Otaf to give uh, some of his comments. Right. Uh, let me off one uh, first. Uh, the, the coronavirus has shown clearly to us how we have to work together internationally uh, to face all major challenges faced by mankind in the future. Uh, today we're talking about the coronavirus, but the same applies to climate change. The same applies to cybersecurity, uh, uh, terrorism, and so on. Those are problems that can only be successfully tackled if we operate as a global system. Uh, the coronavirus, either the issue of the coronavirus is dealt with in the poor parts of the world, or it will bounce back. It is bouncing back in China now, as we, as we know. So we have to have a concerted global effort. Uh, this week we will have the, uh, the first ever virtual meetings, or spring meetings of the IMF and the World Bank. And one issue at the table is what to do in terms of a debt relief, uh, so as to allow low-income countries to implement their policies on the lines that we here. Uh, the second takeaway that I would like to offer is uh, as we are watching the development of a basic income, uh, the establishment of, of a basic minimum income programs all over the world, which would help us all as a world to have less poverty. The, uh, how to tackle the over-indebtedness of households, 
and really thank you. Thank you, congratulations, Rakasa, and congratulate you all for the important work that you guys are doing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The guest speaker. Uh, so I get a very important message uh, from all of the presentation that there is no such thing as a trade-off between the the containment policies and uh, the recession. So saving lives must be our main priority in here, and we should clearly uh, give out this message to the regulators. So we have come to the end of. Uh, uh, presentation. Uh, uh, so thank you so much.